Perforated red jasper looks fractured, but every break you see has been healed by silica. This rock began as silica-rich sediment enriched with hematite, the same iron oxide that gives Mars its deep red color. These sediments settled in ancient shallow seas or within layers of volcanic ash. The pieces in this video come from South Africa, where red jasper traces back to banded iron formations created during the Great Oxidation event more than 2.5 billion years ago. On the seafloor, silica, clay, and iron oxides accumulated layer by layer. Over time, they compacted, hardened, and transformed into red jasper. In land-based settings, red jasper can also form in volcanic terrain. Eruptions blanket the ground with ash, silica dust, and iron-rich debris. Mixed with groundwater, these materials form silica-rich muds that later harden into jasper. Where the Earth's crust is stressed or uplifted, the jasper breaks into sharp angular fragments called clasts. Then groundwater carrying dissolved silica seeps into every crack. As the fluids cool, the silica precipitates, coating each fragment and slowly cementing the pieces back together. The result is a rock broken by nature, then rebuilt vein by vein by flowing silica. Geologists call this process brecciation. This type of red jasper is one of the most forgiving to polish. It's hard, stable, and keeps its shape through all four tumbling stages. Rough pieces look dusty and muted, but polishing reveals deep reds and contrasting patterns formed by those healed fractures. Still, polishing red jasper does come with a few quirks. Because most rough is crushed and sized, many pieces start with deep impact marks that take extra time to remove in stage one. Also, minor chipping along healed fracture lines can show up in the later stages, but adding ceramic media in stages two through four helps cushion the load and reduce that flaking. If you want to see how Tiger's Eye, Sodalite, Carnelian Agate, and Apache Tears formed, check out the videos linked in the description. 